is and, and the feel of the shoe and the look of the shoe, um, people understand that this is a place where there's very often quite a bit of mm -hmm. discussion, uh, hopefully not compromise in a bad way, but uh, uh, collaboration. Mm -hmm. The actor might say, you know what, really, I don't feel like that's a flattering look on me or I'm not comfortable in that kind of shoe. And it's within the designer's right to say, uh, you know, I, I noticed that you wear exclusively runners. <laughs> 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 so would you mind giving these shoes, you know, a couple of days try and pay for myself? That's not unusual, is it? No, it's not. It's, it's interesting, actually, because I think especially now in the world we live in where everybody dresses in a much more relaxed way. I mean, there are a lot of young actors I've worked with who don't know how to tie a tie, who've never worn anything except running shoes. Um, it's, it's like a total mystery to them when you put them in formal wear. And it's really interesting because they, some of them kind of go, oh, this is really interesting. And some of them just, like, it's, it's so weird. You can tell it, it's hard for them. It takes a while to get used to it. But I mean, I agree with David that in the ideal situation, like to me, the shoes, if you get the shoes right, it almost doesn't matter what else you've got. Like, it's all about shoes and hair. And I have this theory that, that if you get the shoes right, you get the hair right, they can just be wearing blue jeans in the middle. And then it doesn't really matter. Um, because, because the shoes can say so much about the character. And uh, I mean, I did a production last year of uh, a modern dress version of Country Wife, and, um, which is a play, an 18th century play by William Witcherly. And, and I just kept saying, it's really all about the shoes. It's all about the shoes. And it was really a fun show to do because the, um, it was all bought from the Value Village, essentially, or shoe stores. Like, I usually try not to spend more than $30 on a pair of shoes unless, <laughs> unless I know I've got the resources because, you know, you don't have big budgets a lot of the time. Um, so I know where to go to find them. But, um, uh, uh, but every character had shoes that said so much about who they were that it was really fun to kind of find all those different kinds of shoes and see how much they could express about a character. And, you know, and, and so hopefully, because you know the actor you're working with, that you, you're, when you're looking, you're thinking not of just that character, but David Storch is that character. So I might look very differently for, for the character in a play if, if David was playing it than I would if, if um, uh, another actor was playing it who brought very different parts to that role, you know, because every actor will have a different interpretation. It's also uh, an in part of the process, I'm sure you can attest to as well, where what you necessarily start with, especially with footwear and what you end with, can be very different things. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, often you aren't dealing with uh, you know, big budgets, but sometimes the shoes that you get, as the show starts to develop, it's like, okay, we, this isn't going to work. What can we, what can we change to make it work? And uh, I tend to get work through two, two different sources in theater. It's either the shows that, are, that know they're going to have a lot of builds, so they're going to be big budget, they're gonna be the Lord of the Rings type of shows. And then often I'll also get work from shows that have been running for maybe a month or two where it's people are realizing what they thought was going to work either isn't because the shows uh, become much more physical or uh, often with things like uh, some of the Cirque du Soleil stuff even, people will start off doing a not very physical track and the shows will continue to develop even past premiere and then that's when I'll start getting phone calls of we have 16 actors who are having problems because what started out as a walkabout has turned into this big dance number. Can you come down and take a look and see what you can do? And uh, often, so often I will get phone calls of we're having a bit of a problem. Can you come down to the theater? And a lot of the time that poses as many problems as the big budget dance shows when you're going okay, this person is wearing a very simple looking pair of Oxfords, but now they need to be able to climb this tower, they need to be able to do a handspring. How do we get the two to mesh? So it's always part of the, part of the evolution that is a show, because mm -hmm. things always change.
I mean, it's sort of interesting because the other thing is you're dealing with creating the illusion for an audience. I had to do a show once where an actor had to do somersaults in a suit of armor. Um, <laughs> so obviously we had to make what appeared to be a solid breastplate and greaves and things, but couldn't actually be out of anything that couldn't. We actually made it all out of foam, I think, in the end or something, and covered it with fabric. But it had to be soft, and he had to do somersaults. So he had to be able to, to kind of do this, which is not normally what you do with a... In your arm. In, in your <laughs> arm. You know, so I mean, it's the same in terms of, you know, what happens on your feet, too, that, that the, if you, you, you can make the audience believe they're seeing something, which may not at all be what they're actually looking at. And that's kind of the fun part. What are some of the other fun, odd, memorable shoes <laughs> <laughs> that you guys have worn or designed or built? How much time do we have? I've yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got a hunch that huh? Jeff can trump huh? us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have to take turns. You get to one and then they okay. can share one. And then, okay. Sounds good. One of, one, of, one of the pair that the most engineering and most development went into was a pair of... Uh, nine-inch platforms that were developed for, again, this is for Lord of the Rings, where don't know how many people saw the show, but all of the elves, uh, or the majority of the elves were the same people who were playing the hobbits, and there's a pretty grand height difference, so suddenly we were having to literally put people in nine-inch platforms under their costumes. It's like, okay, how do, how do you make that work? <laughs> and we ended up having Again, going back to the first fitting, there must have been about 12 people all there to figure out how, how we're going to do this because everything affects something else. So we ended up having props people who are building these steel platforms, but first some of the shoe work had to be figured out in order to know the proper stride because then you're getting into the biomechanics, which you start bringing the physical therapists in on which affects the shoes, which then affects the platform because the person still needs to be able to walk in them on a raked stage. And uh, that, that's one of the most, or no, that's not one of the right. most bizarre ones, but that's the first one that came to right, came right. mind. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, I, I, okay. This it's is not total... a contest, it's not a contest. <laughs> I know. But at the total opposite end of the spectrum, um, I mean, I have done shows where we've been able to build shoes, uh, but one of the other things that I think is interesting is actually when you're not in that position, uh, when you have to produce footwear that looks really, really, really old and beat up, um, and yet has to be wearable. And uh, so if you're not in a situation to call up Jeff and, and, and say what we've got to make is a pair of, you know, boots that look like they've been worn in, uh, you know, the mud for 27 years by someone who has never been able to polish them. Uh, how do you deal with those kinds of problems? And yet the inside, you can't just go find really old shoes half the time because the insides have to actually be something that an actor can put their foot in. Um, and you can get shoes that are falling apart, but you can't get shoes that are falling apart that are going to fall apart. They, you know, they have to actually <laughs> last through the run. And 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 actors, um, you know, it's a hugely demanding physical requirement to get through a play. You know, regardless of what they're doing. I think somebody once told me that doing a Shakespeare, uh, an actor doing a major role in a Shakespeare was the put out the equivalent energy of a football player in a in a football game, an entire football game. Um, so. Clothing, costumes, uh, even as David mentioned earlier, if you're in a situation where it's just a pretty normal looking play, there's a lot more stress put on the clothes than there is in everyday street life. Um, so if you're in a position to, to, to say you've got to get a pair of shoes that are at least, or boots that are at least in good enough shape to uh, last and be comfortable and not have nails sticking up out of them and not have the lining all falling apart and things, uh, you know, then you've got to make them look like they've been through the wars. And how do you do that? And so, you know, everything from a belt sander 
uh, to steel brushes to, like I've driven back and forth over things. Um, you know, like, because the, if you get things that are leather and the leather is new, you've got to make it soft. So you've got, I mean, Jeff's probably done tons of this too, but this whole process of breaking them in, breaking them down, making them look as old as they need to. Paint, you know, you use paint, you use sawdust, you use glue, you use, you know, all kinds of terrible things. And you take chains to them and you beat them up, you know. Um, that that's actually something that I think we do quite a lot of, but we don't think twice about, you know. But to an outsider, it might seem odd that you would get, you might potentially get something brand new and then totally set about destroying it just so that it looks like it's been lived in for that long. And there's ways, there's ways to do it where you get, the, you, know, you get things wet and then you scrunch them up and then you tie them in rope and then you let them sit for a few days to dry out so when they unfold, they've got all the wrinkles in the right place. And, you know. So I don't know. Your choice. Honest shoes? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, um, be, being somebody who, who, who puts a great deal of uh, t thought into his, his shoes and has a special relationship as an actor with his shoes. I know that, um, that it can be a lot of fun if you have a, a designer who's willing to collaborate with somebody as, uh, uh, um, I don't know, I'm not a problem, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't a problem. I, I, I like to have a lot of input. Um, and um, like some, sometimes I have, I have asked for shoes that are too big, like a lot too big, like uh, I wear an eight and I did a show once where I, I wanted size 11, so it was a matter of finding 11s that had a narrow enough, what do you call the mouth of a shoe? What's that called? Like it needs to be the opening usually. The opening <laughs> of the shoe was, was narrow enough that I could tie them up tightly and they'd stay on my feet. So I did feel a little bit clown-like and like it felt, it felt weird in a good way that my feet were so big and that I was slipping around and then that made me feel, it was a comedy, made me feel like a little bit funny or something. Um, or li likewise, a shoe that compared to what you wear in life is, is a little bit is tighter, heavier, like, across the arch of the foot, you, you tie up the laces and you feel restricted. It's a, the, you know, the, the footwear equivalent of a, a tall collar and tight can really affect how you, how you feel about yourself on stage. And I love, I mean, I love it when actors want to have shoes that are too big as well. I mean, because, because there is a wonderful thing that you can create there that you can't do except by giving someone shoes that are too big. I mean, Charlie, like that, that kind of schlumping quality where you're, you know, you're, you're, you can sort of hear the space in between their foot and not, it, I think it's, like I love it when actors say give me shoes that are too big if it's what is going to help the character. It's kind of an actor's secret, right? Like, like it's, it's the, without actually wearing slippers, if you felt like, again, like going to my imaginary play about businessmen and their wives, if, <laughs> if, if the shoes that you were wearing, for whatever reasons, like the, 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 um, the inserts that you put in, the padding, uh, it made you feel a little bit like you were wearing slippers, like you were wearing house slippers at, in a serious, you know, at a funeral or something like that, that can be a really valuable sensation for an actor. And that's, no one knows it, and, and it's a secret, and you derive great power from that at times. Yeah, and there's something, <laughs> something very much to be said about uh, comfort, but not just physical comfort, but the comfort between an actor and uh, what he or she wears on his feet, because, you know, the ideal situation is, the way I think about it, no matter what the artist is doing on stage, you don't want them to think about what's on their yeah. feet. Whether it's somebody you know, playing King Lear or it's somebody who's doing double backflip and needs to land on a bar this big, you don't want them thinking about what's on their feet because as soon as they do, they're dropping their character. They're not who they are. You need to... I would say you don't want them thinking about anything to do with their costume. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I just but care about the feet. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I just wanted to... But, uh, but yeah, the, you... There needs to be a trust that is built up. And uh, one of the things I love is dealing with actors who are very set uh, about what they want because there's such a relationship between you know, the feet and the character. Because it's all, movement starts at the feet for the most part. And um, th there are certain actors I've dealt with who will have a very clear idea. Like when you, when you work with somebody like Michael Terrio, it's fantastic because he will come and say, I've got this wacky idea, 